Hello everybody, welcome to my video on a product differentiated Bertrand market. I've done a couple of Bertrand videos already. Before we always had identical products. They were perfect substitutes with each other. And so if our firms had symmetric costs, they would split the market quantities and sell at cost, which if we simplified the model and said no fixed cost and a constant marginal cost, profit was zero. We're gonna change all of that now. We're gonna get rid of all of those ideas and let's start with the idea of imperfect substitutes. Our firms are selling slightly different goods. So here's a demand curve for firm one. The quantity demanded is 400 minus P1 plus 2P2. Uh, if the price of firm two goes up, my demand for good one goes up. The two prices enter the demand curve with different coefficients. They're not perfect substitutes, but there is a relationship. And we'll do something similar for firm two. 500 minus 3P2 plus P1. So we've got these goods that can be substituted for each other to some extent, but the degree of substitution is not perfect. They don't enter the same. And we're gonna find that that is a source of market power. That these firms, even if we make them have the same marginal costs, in this case, I'm gonna make them both be 100, uh, they're both still gonna make money because their product differentiation gives them an additional source of power. Now, I do wanna warn you, we're not gonna set price equal to marginal cost. Price will not be 100. That's the old way when we're selling perfect substitutes. No more. So let's figure out how to do this. What we're gonna do, let's start by looking at total revenue. Price times quantity, which means price times 400 minus P1 plus 2P2. That's total revenue for firm one. Marginal revenue for firm one then is gonna be the derivative of total revenue with respect to price one. If you don't speak calculus, that's fine. Something to point out though is that we are going to be changing prices instead of changing quantities. In Cournot, we choose quantities. In Bertrand, we choose prices. So keep that in mind. Now for those who don't speak calculus, in my class, I use straight lines for my demand curves, it really helps because it means when I do my total revenue, my marginal revenue curve, all I have to do is double the slope on the price I'm choosing. Firm one chooses P1, and so it doubles the slope on P1. So instead of 400 minus P1 plus 2P2, it's 400 minus 2P1 plus 2P2. The P1 that firm one chooses, double the slope, you'll get your marginal revenue. That is true as long as it's a straight line. Uh, likewise, for firm two, P2 times Q2 is total revenue. So plug in the demand curve there. Marginal revenue, we double the slope on P2, since that's the price they're choosing, is 500 minus 6P2 plus P1. And there you've got the doubled slopes for the P that they're choosing. So with all this, we're still gonna, we're gonna do something that's very familiar by now. Set marginal revenue equal to marginal cost. Both firms will do it. Now, in the past, I've always treated this as a choosing quantity sort of equation because our marginal revenue is total revenue, change in total revenue over change in quantity. But now that it's change in total revenue over price, let's introduce some intuition. Basically, I'm gonna lower the price and as I do, I'm gonna pick up customers. I'm going to lower my price and pick up customers all the way up until the new revenue from the next customer is equal to the new cost. Once the new revenue for the customer is less than the cost, I should stop. And so that's where this marginal revenue equals marginal cost kicks in. So let's come down and see what it looks like. Marginal revenue 400 minus 2P1 plus 2P2 equals 100. Remember, we got a constant marginal cost of 100. So for firm one, that simplifies out a little bit, you get this, 150 plus 2P, sorry, 150 plus P2 equals P1. For firm two, similar steps, we get this. Now take a quick note here. These prices that we've solved for by setting marginal revenue equals marginal cost, they're not numbers, these are equations. Price one, is a function of price two. Price two is a function of price one. 
these are the prices we choose based on the other player that give us the highest profit, we call that best response functions. The best response function tells me what will make me most profitable based on whatever you're doing. One thing to note about these best response functions, they both have positives in front of the other firm's prices. In a price war, if my competitor raises prices, my best response is to raise prices too because I can do so without losing customers and I can make more money. So, should be positive. If it comes out negative, you did it wrong. So our Nash equilibrium, as always, is the intersection of the best response functions. So find where these two things cross each other and that will give you your Nash equilibrium prices for this Bertrand competition with differentiated products. So let's figure it out. 150 plus, oh yeah, by the way, we're gonna start with best response one. So 150 plus price two. Uh, price two though is one sixth times 400 plus P1. Notice that there in the brackets is best response for firm two. All of that equals P1. I've substituted BRF2 into BRF1. And we can simplify that a little bit. We get this, we get that, and price one equals $260. Then I can substitute firm one's price into firm two's best response. 400 plus P1, well, P1 is 260. And I will get that price two is equal to $110. Price one was 160. Price two was 210. Sorry, it was 110. Notice both firms have the same cost. They both had a constant marginal cost of 100 and they charge completely different prices. The additional market power that comes from product differentiation lets them charge above cost. And the firm that can differentiate its product more can charge even more money. Now, let's do some quick recall. The demand curve for firm one was this, 400 minus P1 minus two P, plus two P2. Well, in this case, that is 400 minus 260 plus 220 equals 360. That's how much of good one will be produced and sold. Uh, firm two, had a demand curve 500 minus 3P2 plus P1. That's equal to 500 minus 330 plus 260 equals 430. And that's Q2. Okay, we've got our quantities now. There they are. We've got our prices above. What are profits? Profit for firm one is Q1 times P1 minus ATC1. Notice that now as opposed to most of our duopoly models, I have a one on the price. That's because our firms can choose different prices. So that's gonna matter now. And this is equal to 360 times 260 minus 100. It's $57,000, oh sorry, $57,600. Profit for firm two. Quantity two times P2 minus ATC2 is equal to 430 times 110 minus 100 equals 4,300 bucks. So even though Firm 2 made a lot more because their price was low, their price was low, so their profits are lower too. So I hope this is a helpful intro to you to product differentiation in a Bertrand market. I've got a couple of different kinds of product differentiation in some other videos, uh, but this one fits into your standard oligopoly frameworks that you may already be familiar with. So... Hopefully it was useful to you guys. If not, too bad. Good luck out there. Be safe. Make good choices. All that. Happy econing.